Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is Monday. Who is in first today? Who? Who is on first? Jennifer, number one, as always. Kitty, number two, back to your number two spot. Welcome, Kitty. How we doing? Hello, other Jennifer, also in Florida. I think they grow Jennifers in Florida or something. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Angela, good to have you with us. Dennis and Dana and Nancy. Pasadena is in the house. Hey, Sylvia, good to have you with us. Great to have you here, Nancy. Julie. Truly, your ears must be burning because you were just the topic of conversation. You were, you were. Great to have you here. Hey, Diane. Hey, Adele. Good to have you with us. Hey, Cindy. Karen. Good to have you with us. Stephanie Potts is in the house. Barb. Cheers. Cheryl. <laughs> Jenny, I don't know. It's it's a coast thing. I think it, I think the Facebook gods. You gotta call Zuckerberg. You got Zuckerberg in California. Bailey, good to have you with us. Hey, Lisa, hey, Suki. <laughs> don't overthink it, Giddy. Don't overthink the form. And uh, yeah, the, it, it is the form only the government can come up with. Hey, Alexa, I know I owe you a follow up. Um, I got several people that, today that I got messages from that I got to follow up on. Tomorrow's going to be a very, uh, busy day. Don't overthink it, Kitty. Don't overthink it. Marianne Evans is with us. Nancy. Brooke. What are we all grateful for today? I like that decision, Michelle. That's something to be grateful for, that six months from now, your store is going to be the best it's ever been. Boom! Drop the mic! She's got it! Hey, Alicia! And Brooke says, mind you, yes, please, not going to get ahead. I'll talk to you. Hey, Dana, great to have you with us. So what is everybody else, now that we heard what Michelle is grateful for, what is everybody else grateful for? I'm going to share, hey, you know, there, there was that post the other day with all the colorful packages. The, uh, the other day there was a post about resale store shopping and all the colorful packages. Um, and um, 50 consigners dropping off curbside. That's awesome. Store is doing well. Comment sold is kicking up sales a notch. Nice. Lots of things. You, my employees. Yeah, I feel like I cut you short today, Julie. I'm sorry about that. That was so many hours ago. It feels like days ago already today. No hurricanes. Well, I'm glad you, you had eight in. Kathleen in Alaska. Wow. You joining live, Kathleen? I am shocked. I'm grateful, you know, we we worked in the other day, you know, there was a post about all the different packages somebody got from all the different resale shops, and you saw all the different colors and everything else. Did everybody see that post? Show me some likes if we saw that post. You remember seeing that post? There were green packages and blue packages and brown packages and all sorts of different packages um, that that somebody got. Yeah, you saw that. Well... I don't think any of them does what this package does. Look at that one that I got today. I mean, is that snazzy or what? I mean, that's pretty snazzy. Did you see the package I got today, Tina Kelly? Mm -hmm. I got a package. It's right there. Boom! 
It's very pretty. And it came from a store that is on the show tonight, that is here with us. Sent that very pretty package. We might have to discuss the cost of that packaging uh, versus the, uh, you know, versus the size of the purchase. But hey, you know, you know, Zach can take a pay cut. It's okay. I, you know, may have to come out of the wedding budget. But I love getting that. I can't wait to open it. I did not open it. Hang on a second. Now I'm being told to open it. Hang on a second. I'm going to try to open it. Can I, can I open it? Do I need scissors? I don't need scissors. Hang on a second. Hang on. I am opening the package live on the show. I, it is an unboxing. Ooh, hang on. Look at all this stuff. Look at all this. Look at all this fancy stuff in here. Hang on a second here. What are these, Soxies? I don't even know what these things are. Somebody's going to have to explain these to me. Oh, you just wanted to know whether I did. Okay. Hang on, there's multiple cards in here, too. We'll have to look at it later. But the packaging was nice. I, I, the, the, the packaging was, uh, was primo there, Marianne. I will look at it all later. I was just excited. I literally just walked in the door before I went online. Well, I walked in the door, I ran to the bathroom, then I hopped online. <laughs> so, I was running late today. Footies, okay, see? All right, so let's go. I, let's get started here tonight. Thank you all for what you're grateful for. I almost skipped over the book here. We start every night on the program with our good morning, good night book, our good morning, good night book. Our good morning tonight is, hang on a second. Good morning. Write a bit just for yourself. Give that maelstrom in your head a place to land. Look at everything swirling around in there. Good morning. That is our good morning tonight. Yes, I, I understand the concept and the cost of that. I, I, I sometimes have a problem with the cost of it, but I get it, Marianne. And it's true, it is an ad, it is a sale you would not have gotten otherwise. It wasn't like I was going to walk into your store that night um, uh, in, in Algonquin and buy that. So it is, it is a found sale. So the fact that you make a little less because you spent more on packaging to create that experience is a very valid point. All right, so let's do this. Uh, what do I got on tap for tonight? But you've really just set the bar high with that package. I love that pink. That is, that, that is one hot ticket, that pink. Uh, a great lesson in lo of life. Are you ready for a story today? Because today's my coaching day, so I have a great lesson. I always have something uh, from my coaching call. <laughs> All right. A great lesson of life. There once was a young boy with a very bad temper. With a lesson in mind, his father gave him a bag of nails and told him every time he lost his temper, he was to hammer a nail into their wooden fence. On the first day of his lesson, the boy had put 37 nails into the fence. He was really mad. Over the course of the next few weeks, the boy began to control his temper, so the number of nails he hammered into the fence decreased drastically. The day finally came when the boy didn't lose his temper one time. He was so proud of himself, he couldn't wait to tell his father. His father was pleased and suggested he now begin pulling out one nail for each day he held his temper. Weeks went by and, and the day finally came when the boy was able to tell his father, All of the nails are gone! His father then very gently led him to the fence. 
You have done very well, my son, he smiled, but look at the holes in the fence. It will never be the same. The boy listened carefully as his father continued to speak. When you say things in anger, they leave permanent scars like these. And no matter how many times you say you're sorry, the wounds will still be there. A verbal wound is as bad as a physical one. Friends and loved ones are a very rare jewel, indeed. They make you smile and encourage you to succeed. They lend an ear, share a word of praise, and always want to open their hearts to us. Water your relationships with kindness, and they will grow. Be careful, little lips, what you say, and you won't chase friendships away. The boy now stood silent as he began to understand the value of the lesson his wise father tactfully taught him. This was a life-changing lesson his father had just shared. Amen. How about that one? All right, folks. That there is your inspiring lesson to look inside yourself, you know? I, I, uh, I can say I didn't always know uh, the right time to bite my tongue. I'm much, much better at it. Uh, as age, uh, I have age, but hey, you know these are these are good and important lessons. Does anyone know what the COVID nineteen surcharge is? Okay, uh, the COVID nineteen surcharge. Local businesses. Uh, I figured you would like that, Michelle. Thank you, Nancy. And it's a good day to bite the tongue, Nancy, especially when we aren't happy with what our governor did today. Uh, another month of being closed is not, not something I have a good tongue for uh, today uh, with the governor. But that's uh, moving on. We are moving on. What is a COVID-19 surcharge? Why local businesses may start charging you a new fee. Small businesses are facing new challenges during the... Uh, pandemic, including large-scale stay-at-home orders and changes to their operations and new expenses, okay? And so that is increasing your costs. So think of, uh, you know, I've talked about the uh, pizza restaurant and how the cost of all the gloves that they're you the extra gloves uh, that they're doing. Edwin, I'm getting information that it's going to be much worse than that, that we're, that we're looking at the end of June. Uh, not not on not on June eighth that we're that we're really looking at the end of June is the information I'm getting uh, in Massachusetts. Um, so uh, they are applying, you know, all these costs that are coming on to businesses. You know, the costs of being closed, the costs of think of a restaurant, um, the the cost of. Um, uh, you know, running your restaurant at only half capacity. You know, all these are extra costs that are being passed on to business. The cost of extra cleaning supplies and, and things. All, all of these um, are extra costs, and people, uh, uh, people are doing that. And so you're starting to see restaurants and other businesses pass on an extra surcharge. Um, and they're, they're noting it, you know, they're putting it in big, bold print in their signs and on different things. You know, this particular restaurant in Arizona, um, added a 5% charge. Um, a restaurant in Missouri recently made national, uh, headlines for instituting a COVID-19 surcharge. So there is a, um, Businesses aren't, you know, one of the keys of this article, which is actually kind of nice, and this is in good housekeeping, is that businesses are not trying to pull a fast one, but they're trying to stay alive. And so, but there's a hard, uh, there's a hard time with that in, in the eyes of a consumer. You know, I've been uh, really, uh, you know, obviously we all live it, so, you know, even when we eat out, we've been, you know, like when we've been getting takeout the last couple of nights, we over tip and, and tip more than we normally would in doing different things just because we want them to still be there. But um, this is a hard time for all. And the um, COVID surcharge may be a thing that we start seeing. It's it's gaining some traction. Uh, hey, Joanne, Kristen and Kelly, good to have you with us. Vina's with us tonight. 
uh, the uh, Minnesota, Minnesota, they are considering a financial aid plan. Oops, my clip, dropping things here. The, the state of Minnesota is considering a financial aid plan for the Mall of America. Yes, the Mall of America, which also um, was mortgaged to help fund the new American Dream Mall in New Jersey. Oh, that's exciting, Joanne, that you had a Zoom graduation. I'm glad to hear that. We had a video graduation the other day for Rebecca. So, you know, it was it's, it's weird doing the uh, video graduation thing. Um, so, yes, it is being talked about in the uh, Minnesota legislature to give them, uh, how much money are they trying to give them? 80-something million? Yeah, uh, to help offset unpaid rent and such, they're trying to get the state to give them over $80 million in uh, additional uh, financing incentives to the mall so that the mall can survive this. Um, it's interesting because... They also mortgaged that mall. The, the developers of that took on this project on the New York-New Jersey border. It's uh, just over in New Jersey where um, the Giant Stadium and Jet Stadium is, uh, where they play football right next to that. They built this massive, it's been like more than two decades in the process of being built because it's of various ups and downs and it's just getting ready to open. Um, the American Dream Mall um, in uh, uh, New Jersey. And uh, so they borrowed on Mall of America to do that, and now they want the state of Minnesota to um, give them money because of COVID. So $80 million is what they're looking for. It's just an interesting thing happening in retail. But it certainly, you know, what pre-COVID... What Mall of America is as a destination and, and the people, you know, if you went to conference out there and, and went to the mall, I mean, it's just an amazing metropolis that goes on forever. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable and it's got crowds and it brings in people from all over the world. So it is truly good for the state of Minnesota. Um, but, uh, you know, as we all work to get to where we're going, you know, an extra $80 million doesn't, uh, seem, uh, you know, good. Uh, massive layoffs are coming at Office Depot. The company said it would pivot its business model away from retail. That the, means the elimination of 13,100 jobs in the next three years and presumably a large number of store closures. The company operates nearly 1,300 stores in the 20,000 to 20, 25,000 square foot range, which could, which could prove ideal for expansion-minded retailers looking for smaller spaces. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, hang on a second. I didn't get a chance to highlight that. It was something you know. Yeah, that's all stuff we've covered. Hang on, I'm not going to cover that. Oh, this was important. Hang on a second. I'm like, I knew I had something important in there. There have been, you know, we had talked about privacy bills, okay, coming up in Congress. Well, there's one that um, is out there from Richard Blumenthal the, from Connecticut and um, has been introduced uh, called the Public Health Emergency Privacy Act. Um, uh, Blumenthal, Mark Warner, um, and others have introduced this. Um, and the bills are concerning for retailers since they do not preempt state laws and would cover the collection of all data from employees with respect to screening, social distancing, and contact tracing, adding significant new compliance costs for retailers and restaurants and potential liability through private rights of action and statutory penalties of up to $5,000 per violation. The National Retail Federation is preparing an analysis of this new legislation will be sent to the members of the Privacy Work Group 
And uh, but that is a dangerous thing if we're required to uh, trace and uh, keep all that information on our employees. You like this shirt? Thank you, Bonnie. Okay, I I picked it out myself this morning. I gotta say I I did dress myself this morning, so I did good. Um. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Hang on a second. We got more here. Staples paid their rent. How about that? Uh, who's paying rent and who isn't? Um, uh, as May began, 82% of the month's rents for Staples were in landlord's hands. Um... Uh, Retailers that had paid 95% or more of the rents by the day, uh, Albertsons, Big Lots, Chase, Bank, Hobby Lobby, Office Max, Price Shoppers, Rite Aid, ShopRite, Super Value, Target, Ulta Beauty, uh, Walgreens, Wells Fargo, uh, Whole Foods, and Wingstop. Sprouts Farmer's Market was the only 100% paid up tenant on the list. The list of chains that had paid no rent at all by the 8th was longer. 24-Hour Fitness, AMC Theaters, Ann Taylor Slash Loft, Bed Bath & Beyond, Carter's, Century 21, Sinopolis, Claire's Boutiques, Dave & Buster's, Famous Footwear, Five Below, Foot Locker, H&M, Harkins Theaters, Kirkland Home, Men's Warehouse, Old Navy, Party City, Regal Cinemas, Steinmart, The Gap, and Tilly's. Um, and this is all verified billing and collections data. Open your card for me. I haven't got... I'll go back to it. Hang on a second, Marianne. And... Which is creating a huge cash crisis and half the tenants aren't pay, paying. So... Um, so they opened up this report to give property managers... So this is a Datex report, an industry report that has not uh, been... Is not normally released. Um... You know, and other retailers had paid less, but, and especially in comparison to the year before, because this is also rated on the year before. Pet Supplies Plus had paid 53% instead of the 99% it had paid the first week of May in 2019. Petco, which had made good on 90% of its rate time, rent by this time last year, paid only 18% this year. So it is, a, it is stark differences between who is and who isn't paying, um... And, and the list of not paying is continuing to grow. Grow, grow, grow. Hang on a second. I will open the card. There was a card with my name on it. I saw it. Du, 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 du. Hang on a second. Rebecca, Cassandra. Rebecca gets her own card. Hang on, Katie, uh, Marianne. I am opening my card. Yeah. Uh, oh, I love it. I love it. Little Missy. Trading cards. I got Little Missy trading cards. I love it. This is Little Missy, Adele, in her own baseball card. Like her own baseball card. <laughs> I love it. Hey, and I did today. Look, I got I got a ribbon. I can dress myself. And Bonnie says I did a good job today. Okay. Good boy. <laughs> I got a ribbon for it. Yay. Ooh, nice. <laughs> oh, you're 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 you are you are awesome, Marianne. You're awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Amazing, everybody. Um, that's great. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, that, that, is, that is perfect. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear that. I did dress myself today, so I'm good. I have a uh, retail association board meeting first thing in the morrow morning, and I'm not sure I'm going to get dressed tomorrow for that. I'm... Uh, 
Ah, Adele is now in the loop. Do you have trading cards, though? I have, I have little Missy trading cards. I, I feel... I mean, that's pretty awesome. That is... That... That, that is awesome. Ah, that's great. Oh, that's great, Marianne. Thanks for bringing a smile to my face. I was a little depressed with the governor today, but uh, that, that, is, that is awesome. Oh, what else do I got going on today? I've got a lot in my queue on the PPP. I am wearing it proudly, Marianne. I am wearing it proudly. Um, and let me just see what else I got here for questions that I missed. I learned the Lord spews. May over June through December are all the tennis. Michelle, what happens to the non-payers? I covered that a little bit the other night. It depends on the uh, contracts because some landlords are actually required to uh, sue uh, uh, you know, within a certain number of days, they're, they're required to file suit. Um, it depends, Dana. It depends. Uh, yeah, I should open, uh, uh, Connecticut, New Hampshire, anybody's being more friendly than Massachusetts is being in the business right now. Um, so, uh, I, I did realize, though, a loophole in the, in the Massachusetts ruling, Bonnie, that you'll appreciate. You'll appreciate this. I came up with a, a loophole in it that, um, um, religious, you're allowed to have, um, religious gatherings at 40% occupancy. So, I thought about having prayer service in my store. You know, hand everybody a prayer card on the way in, a yarmulke, I don't know. You know, work with whatever your religion is. I mean, many women find shopping very religious and comforting. Okay, so if we pray about it, okay, if we pray for sales, if we pray to find the right item, if we find a way there, hallelujah, praise be and amen, we will get you there. Amen, that's right, Dana, amen. They did not extend the stay at home, Adele. They extended the, um, they, they spelled out the closures, okay? And so, for example, in Massachusetts, next week you can get your hair cut. You can go to the hair, you can get your hair cut, Adele, which would be, um, eh, but uh, you cannot go into a retail store next week. It's still, all retail is still closed unless it's an essential business. And, uh, Look at all those amens, okay? And um, so they did that, and they said retail won't be till at least June 8th, and the reports I'm getting from the boards I sit on is looking more like the end of June, um, is the information they are being given uh, uh, from uh, the uh, governor's office. And uh, although they did allow curbside, but we can't do appointments, we can't let people in. There, it's really, it do, it really is illogical. I've already been on the phone uh, with our state senator and state rep, and uh, I've been. Uh, I could cut hair while praying, exactly, Sylvia. Although I probably wouldn't be good at the cutting hair. Um, but I will help them pray. I will, I will, I will lead a march. I will lead a, a, a thing. And I'm, I'm all for public health safety. I am completely with it. Just make it, uh, you know, even, even, uh, handed and, uh, and level. This has really been an, uh, a, a, not a level playing field in in massachusetts in the way things have been done especially in the variety of stores that are allowed versus aren't it's it's and a lot of places were really banking on the on today because today was the day he was announcing this plan so a lot of people had actually gotten their hopes up and actually planned to open today or tomorrow and uh so they are really completely dashed i mean and others have gone ahead and opened it and it opened. I know a karate studio opened. I know some other businesses that went ahead and opened. Um, 
and stuff. And, and we'll honor the rule. I'm not happy with the rule. Um, but uh, we will honor it until I get my uh, ordained online or something. And, and then I can, uh, can, can properly give the prayers there. So... Uh, but we'll get to the other side of this. This is just another uh, another opportunity. Opportunity. I think my story at the bottom, at the top, was that you choose your words carefully because they leave scars. So hopefully the governor thinks of that. I will think of that in my... Uh, uh, well, that could, be, that could be a thing, you know. Sometimes... When, when my father wanted to teach my mother about her shopping, he would just not pay the credit card bill. He would just literally not pay it, okay? And she would be out shopping, and she was a shopper. And, and so then they would be like, hey, we didn't get your, you know, it went long enough, and, and uh, it would get turned off. And uh, that would be, the, uh, that would be uh, the way they got around it. Uh, um, so it, it's a, it's a real, uh, shame what they are, what they are doing and how they are, um, handling it. Um, I, I said that the, the reason hairstylists were decided was not because of the governor, but the lieutenant governor is a very nice lady and she needed to get her hair done. Um, but, uh. You know, he's in a no-win job. I, I've said it. I've been interviewed on it. I was interviewed, you know, the interview that went today, you know, acknowledged that he's in a no... I said he's in a no-win position. Uh, yes, the peanut butter cups are central. They are. They are. I, I actually started to place an order for more of them in the anticipation of being open because all mine are, are I'm running... I'm out, basically. And so I started to to contact them to get more today, and I was going to get custom ones made uh, for graduations and stuff with the area high school uh, letter on it, and uh, I was having all this stuff done in anticipation of being back open. Um, and so I have to decide how many I'm really going to bring in um, if we're going to be uh, closed, because there's only so many of those that I can eat when they go when they get outdated. Um, they never go bad. I stick them in my freezer, but you know. The, uh, you know, you don't want this huge, you don't want Neil to turn into a peanut butter cup. But I digress. So let's talk about you guys. What do we got going on? This is not the uh, Neil Massachusetts sob hour here. Um, that Massachusetts will fix itself. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I've had a lot from you today and I have not, and I have not gotten back to everybody today. Um, and I will get back to you on the PPP. So the PPP is a big question for you guys. So some of the confusing things on the PPP forgiveness form. So let's talk. Let me hit a couple of highlights that I know are in my question box. And uh, we'll dig into more detail tomorrow um, as I'm able to call people back. Because today uh, did escape from me as I was uh, praying for the governor. Um... <laughs> The um, start date, so the eight-week start date, that is a choice of, your choice, okay, of when the money deposited in your account is choice number one, or nobody, oh, Dana, you didn't screw up things so, but there's not, Nobody screwed up things so bad that it can't be fixed, okay? Unless we're in your last week of your PPP, nobody screwed up anything that can't be fixed. So, um, the start date of your PPP... Yes, you're on my list, too. You want me to write about your landlord. See, I even remember why you're on my list, Jenny. Um, and I've got that, too. After my board meeting tomorrow, I'll get back to people. I'll get caught up with people, I think... Isn't that my big thing on my list tomorrow is my board meeting? Oh, no. I thought you said Tuesday was your crazy day. Uh, Tuesday is my crazy day, but every day sort of becomes a crazy day. Monday normally is, but I didn't have everything on my calendar, but we were driving today, and we both knew that today was going to go sideways um, because my Monday is usually... Uh, you got a thing at 2 o'clock, and then you've got a 6 o'clock and a 7 o'clock. Oh, I have a 6 o'clock and a 7 o'clock tomorrow? Oh, that's right. we got the congressman at 6. Okay, so... Somewhere between 11 and 2 and 3 and 6, I will be calling people tomorrow. 
um, is sort of my, that's my free time tomorrow. Um, is the, uh, is the schedule for tomorrow. Uh, the start date for your PPP can either be the date the money deposited in your account, that start date, that can be the start of your eight weeks, or the start date, the start date for your PPP can be, um, the beginning of your next payroll period. So if you're in the middle of the payroll period on the day that your payroll uh, drops, your start date... Yes, the peanut gallery does keep Neil straight. It does. Try. And they, she tries. <laughs> um, so either the date that your PPP deposit is, or if that's in the middle of your PPP, at your election, it can be... the. Huh? You just said it wrong. Say that again. Okay, hang on. The peanut gallery says I need to say that again. The PPP start date of your eight weeks can either be the day of the deposit from your bank or the start of your next payroll period. Let's say your deposit comes in today and you're in the middle of the payroll period but your new pay period starts on Sunday. That can be the start of your PPP. Okay? So that is an option. That is one of the big uh, questions. The other big question uh, is, what is an FTE? An FTE is a full-time equivalent employee, and that is calculated based on your payroll hours. Okay? And you can calculate that and divide that by 40. 40-hour 40 metric is... is what a full-time equivalent is. And the other big thing is the various periods to calculate it for, okay, is they have allowed that if you restore your FTE count to what you had on the payroll for February 15th by before June 30th, then you met the safe harbor provision for this, and you are... Um, clear for forgiveness, again, as long as you've spent the money appropriately. Again, still the money as of today, and this could change if uh, Congress does something, but as of today, the... Um, right. I, I think it, it, there, there's multiple huge gifts in, the, in this form. And ultimately, you are okay to use any of the rules as they exist at the time that you want to use them, okay? So if the rules change and get better, you can use that. If these rules change, um, st are better for you, you can use these. So that, that rule is huge, the February 15th rule. And, um, but the, the form still has to have everything filled out. So all the worksheets and all the different things, and we're going to go through it line by line, uh, one night this week because you guys are going to really need it. Not tonight and not tomorrow night. We're not going to go through it line by line because tomorrow night's got a, I got too many things to do before uh, uh, 8 o'clock tomorrow night. But uh, one night this week I will go through each section of the PPP uh, report um, and uh, the forgiveness application so that you understand what each section is because you, even if you know that you're going to use the February 15th date, you still have to fill out the whole application for forgiveness and calculate all the other periods. So that that is important to know. It's not anything to get hung up on. It's not anything to keep you up at night. I don't want you staying up all night tonight, Dana, worrying about it. I don't want you to get yourself into a hot mess. Uh... You can, Jennifer, so an employee who works 38 hours a week, can I consider them part-time since they're not 40? Uh, yes, you can consider them part-time, okay? It depends on which, which math works better for you. And I, got, I know I have Brad on my list, um, but the math is either you count up all your hours and you divide it by 40 to get your true F full-time equivalent employees, or you treat every 40-hour-a-week employee as one full-time equivalent and anyone that is not 40 as half an employee. And so whichever math works better for you or is easier for you is okay to use. 
Um, in the the really the real reason for the half an employee thing um, is the is people that can't handle handle the math, and uh, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that in an honest government way. Um, in most cases, you're better off doing the actual math. Sarah, the forms that are filled out are narts.org slash resale strong. In fact, all the forms I talk about um, have it in there. So narts.org slash resale strong has the PPP forgiveness form in there. I, I, Je Jeff, I think ultimately it will be, but... Uh, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, stuff out there on it, um, and it really depends on how political things get, Jeff, how soon that happens. It needs to happen. They need to get a couple of bills passed soon, but things are getting very, very election political. And if things get too election political, they won't get any of these bills passed. And that's the real danger that we're in right now with Congress. You know, I've said that I thought we could get to July 4th and get to at least a couple of bills passed. With the amount of stuff going back and forth right now and, and flying around, I'm concerned about that. Um, because there's a lot of finger pointing going on. And, and part of it is, and, and rightfully so, they've put, they've put trillions of dollars into the economy. Trillions of dollars in a very short period of time. And there's been no way to honestly measure the effects of that. Part of it is because the whole freaking economy has been closed. So you can't measure what's being spent. Uh, there's not enough measuring going on. And, uh, you know, nor that... Uh, well, I announced beforehand if I'm... What, yes, I will do my best to. It won't be tomorrow night, I can tell you that. I've got too many things on my plate between now and tomorrow. Um, but, uh, the, um, I'm very concerned with some of the, the pointing that's going on in Congress, and so I am urging them to come together, because quite honestly, while they can't measure, and, and yes, there's been fraud, yes, there's been waste with the money they've spent, but there's been a lot of good stuff, too. And so the American people, American businesses, the American economy can't wait for six months for them to measure this. They can't wait for the election to happen. They can't wait for things to maybe change, maybe not change, see who's in power and make some decisions. Things need to start um, changing and um, more money needs to be done. Will it be perfect? No. No, it won't. But um, this needs to get out there. Part of the problem with all the money coming out so quickly and, and people seeing it is all these special interests are, are vying to have their little piece of the pie. And so there's a lot of games happening in Washington right now. But I am, uh, I'm again, hopeful that we can get a couple of good bills passed between uh, now and uh, the 4th of July because... At the rate things are heating up um, in the back end of things, of, of who's going to control the Senate, who, you know, uh, the balance of power in the House, everything, um, and who's going to be president, um, that's bringing things to a screeching halt. So I am, uh, I am concerned about that, um, especially as this drags on. And I don't think that things dragging on are good for anybody. Um... But everything I post, everything I post, everything I talk about is at the narts.org slash resale strong page. It's there for an important reason because it goes there the next day so that we can share this with everybody. So we can help everybody get to the other side of this. We want every business, every store, every restaurant, everyone coming to the other side. I don't care whether you're a butcher, baker, candlestick maker, or I think I've added a physical therapist to my list of people to call. A boutique hotel owner, um, all these businesses, all of them are important, and all of them need to survive. All of them need to come to the other side, and we're going to get them there. That is our goal. We are going to be the leaders in that. 
Say hallelujah. Say amen. We're bringing them all to the other side. Okay? I'm practicing my church stuff for, for bringing that to resale. Um, but for those of you that missed an earlier part of the program, um, but we're going to get everybody there. And so that's why everything we talk about goes to that page. These videos go to that page. They're also on the YouTube channel. You're not alone running this store uh, where they go there the next day at noon. Thank you, Angie, with that amen. I love it. Love it. All right. We got you all there. I am live, live here every night at 8 o'clock Eastern in the Narts private Facebook group. At uh, the Narts private Facebook group at 8 o'clock Eastern every evening live. I will be back again tomorrow night live at 8 o'clock Eastern. But if you have a question, you want to go over your specific numbers, you want to talk about your specific situation... You email me, neil, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com, and I will email you back, and I will, well, actually, make sure you leave your phone number, because most things need a phone call. So, I will call you back. When you get a call from a 508 number, it's coming from me. If you get a FaceTime from a 508 number, you're going to see this face. So, just email neil, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com. Ah, uh, my quote of the week. Animals are such agreeable friends. They ask no questions. They pass no criticisms. I feel it's important to be positive, not negative. Pets can help you do that. They help us feel happy when we're sad or worried. Even if you don't have a pet, you can watch nature movies or Animal Planet, for example. There's some positivity for you. Every night, every night, we start with the Good Morning, Good Night book. Every night, we start with the Good Morning, Good Night book. For those of us like Russell Levy, who were not here at the top of the program, our Good Morning Tonight was Good Morning. Write a bit, just for yourself. Give that maelstrom in your head a place to land. Look at everything swirling around in there. Our Good Night Tonight is write some thoughts down for yourself. Grab what you can. Pin it to the page. Look at that. How long you been hanging on to those? Good night. Look at that. Look at that graphic. Boom. That was our good morning, good night book. I am Neil Abramson. I do like a good party. I do like a bar. So I like anything with the word party in it. I am there for you every night. Live at 8 o'clock Eastern in the Narts Facebook group. These videos and everything I talk about are replayed and recopied over to the public page, narts.org slash resale strong, so you can share them with all your friends in business because we're going to get everybody to the other side. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Russell saved you again today. I'm so glad to hear them, Michelle. You are not alone running that store, Michelle. You've got Russell and all the other great Narts affiliates are there to help you get to the other side because you and you, but most especially you, are not alone running this store. It's time for dinner, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow night.